<laughs> okay, I'm reloaded. Je- Jeff London, DJ Jason Smith. Pick on the pain. When the sun goes down, the music turns up. A whole new world opens up behind the velvet rope. Join us as we take you behind the scenes of the nightlife world. Are you ready? DJ Jason Smith, Jeff London. I'm the promoter, TV DJ Podcast, live from Boston, Massachusetts. <laughs> Well, 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 my friend. We yep. meet again. Episode seven. Let's do this. Episode seven, my guy. We got an update. Go. We got an update okay. to some unanswered questions last week. Cool. What's the, what, what was the so update? So some Spotify questions that you asked that I, I was unable asked. to answer. Yep. Shout out to Axis Powers, Tony Clark, AO Romero. Romero. Thanks for uh, hitting us up. Here's some of the answers. That you asked last week about the Spotify plays, what it, how long it takes for a song to play to count as a stream. Yeah, because sometimes you just like skip through them, and I wondered if you skip through a song, if it still got credit for a play. It's 30 seconds. 30 seconds. That's and a fair amount of time. Yeah, it's definitely a, You're going to know if you're going to like a song pretty much in 30 seconds or not. Pretty, so that's yeah. fair. Yeah, agreed. And as long as an account is legit, a.k.a. a real person, you can stream anything as much as you want. Um so the answer to that question, you can listen to a song a thousand times. I guess if you listen for over 30 seconds, you get a thousand streams. And the estimate is about a million plays, streams, roughly equals $4,000. Damn. Did I, now, I have another question that could be <laughs> that. Does the record label take their cut out of that $4,000 too? Damn, great question. Then because like, then it'll be like two thirds. Mm. You're not making that would be that'd be rough. I think artists. The only way artists truly are making money right now is from live concerts. Yeah, and guess what? It's not a lot of live concerts. Not right a lot now. of concerts yeah. going on right now, unfortunately. Well, uh, that's awesome. Thanks for the thanks for the information. Access Powers and my guy Tony Clark and Ao Romero. Those guys are great, and we we appreciate you guys following up with us for real, man. And and we appreciate everybody for for still listening to two dudes just sitting around talking shit. <laughs> I love it. Right? Yeah, man. And we're gonna go to part two. Yeah, man. Let's get into part two of with our man, guy, Fat, Fat Man, man Scoop, Scoop, y'all. Yes, he did. Um, pumps whole plan was, and it can be verified by myself, DJ Chill Will, Sean C, Steve D, um, and, and, and Puff, you know, was, I want you to rap hard for the streets, and then I'm going to put you in a suit and tie, and I'm going to make you for the women. And um, just the fact that, and I, I mean, that story has been told at least 10 times, yeah. and it, it definitely got the Puff's ears, so... The fact that there's never been a rebuttal of that, I'll tell you that that's exactly what it was. Wow. And um, <laughs> if you asked Puff, yo, could Fat Man Scoop rap? Puff would tell you right away. Fat Man Scoop was nice. So, um, yeah, that was the whole that was the whole goal. But the thing for me was that I had to come to a realization that I'm nobody's tough guy. Right. I'm a fucking comedian at heart, and I'm a pretty jovial guy unless you fuck with my family, and then the and then the bullets are gonna start ejecting out the chain. Yeah. Other than other than that, I'm a funny guy. Like I'm a fucking happy dude. So I had to look, I was smart enough at that time to know, don't fuck with something you don't know nothing about. Right, right. Don't don't play don't play with that shit. Mm-hmm. Because that shit is real deal. Yeah, and yeah. I understood, I said to myself, if I try to pull this off, dudes are gonna actually test me wherever I go. Right. Well, that was that. And, that was like that. And, that and I was mm-hmm. smart enough to know if I act like a thug in Cleveland, they're going to be like, yo, we real thugs out here. What you doing? In California, they're going to be like, yo, we gangsters. What you doing? In uh, South Carolina, we're going to be like, we, we the hood here too. What's happening? When, when people hear, the, when people see my face in the street, what do you think the first thing is that they do? Want to test your skills, right? 
As soon as they see Fat Man Scoop, no, Fat Man Scoop. They Amy say Scoop. your name. They say your name. Fat yeah, Man yeah, yeah. Scoop. They do? Fat Man Scoop. Crook and Clan. Nope. 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 First thing they do is start going like this. <laughs> <laughs> because, and no music. Because my face and my voice is so synonymous with what I do that, that I'm known for it. Right, so right. So I'm not sure what would have happened had I been a gangster. So I said, okay, if I'm going to do this, I got to get the real gangsters from my neighborhood to roll with me. Yeah. So I said, okay, they know I'm not like that. They know I'm a music guy. So eventually it's just going to become extortion. And I said, you know something? Not for me, man. I don't need the problems. And thank the Lord, you know, I didn't do it. Yeah. And and I'm here today to be who I am. And I'm, I, you know, Biggie was an icon. Of there's course, there's gonna yeah. be yep. nothing bigger for the East Coast Ever. than Biggie. Yeah. Takashi Six Nine was nowhere near Biggie. No. You yeah. know, he was running yeah. around calling himself the King of New York. You don't call yourself the King of New York. The people call you the King right, of New York. Right. Yeah, you don't so, give yourself that title. So no. There has never been a King of New York since Biggie. Mm. Period. No. And 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 and, and Biggie is gonna probably unless somebody just comes through and just does something else, Biggie's going to be the biggest name mm -hmm. that New York has had ever. Yeah. And that's a great legacy. However, I'm very happy being Fat Man Scoop. I, I, I don't it. have that legacy. I have what I have, and what I have is perfect for me. Awesome. That's beautiful. That's you beautiful. created your own lane and stayed in it and stayed true to yourself and didn't play a character, which yep. is very, very great, man. A lot of people can't do that. So with that being said, is there any artist that you haven't worked with and wanted to work with past or present? Mm. Ray Charles. Woo. Um. Jesus, um, that'd be a crazy record, Ray Charles, <laughs> Fat Man Scoop. I would love to. I would love to do something with Drake and Rick Ross. Wow, yeah, that's that. Yeah. Um, that's a good I love combo. Lemon, right there. I love it. Lemon Pepper freestyle. Like I could just go behind Rick Ross and do. We the by the by them. You know, courtroom sound like you in the opera. Let's go. You know, like yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That'd be sick. I, I always wanted just just little ad libs in the back. Nothing crazy. Oh, um, yeah. um. Uh, Mary J. Blige, of course. Everybody in my era wants to do a record with Mary J. Blige. Sure. Um, Legend. I'd like to see you know, her do verses. Um, hmm. That's a good. That's a good question. So, so, Who else is that? Um, I like the baby. Um, I, hmm. I actually like the baby too. He's one of the only artists Man, would, right now. I would love to do a record with Bruno Mars. Wow. Yeah, that'd be that's a good fit. Yeah. Because I know yep. I know Bruno Mars has the. He has the formula. If he threw me in his formula, it's going to ring off. I can I can imagine myself for three or four Bruno Mars records that it would just ring off like that. Um, that yeah, that you guys both have that same energy. Exactly. Sure. Um, who else? I got to think. Of, man, there's a list of people that I would want to do records with, man, that I think that I would just be dope. Dope behind them, man. Um, but I would have to think about that. That's a good, good ass question, man. Thanks, man. So, so going off that, now a hot thing around is verses. Now, if they did a Fat Man Scoop verses, it would be Scat Fat Man Scoop verse. I think the only person it could be against is DJ Cool because we Love have. It. Around the same amount of records, <laughs> yeah, uh, little, yeah. John, little John, little John too, yeah. in, in records. But his, you know, yeah, he's got a big catalog. Little John, little John. If the only record that I probably get him on is "Be Faithful," mm -hmm. but he's got "Snap Your Fingers," he's got yeah, he's got so it, and in so many genres too. Evenly, he's got features all over the place. Tell me where to go. Tell me where to go. And you, no, no. He's yeah, got yeah. so many good records that. He would just out record me. But um I think the only one that would probably be evenly matched would be myself and DJ Cool. I like that. Now, we know you have the show going on right now. It is I've watched a bunch of episodes, Make Noise with Fat Fat Man Scoop. Now a lot of people come on, they've had amazing guests on that show. And if you haven't checked out that show, please check out the show. 
You've been you can, around. You can go to, just to get the audio part, which is make noise with with Fat Man Scoop. You can go to you know anywhere you get your favorite podcast. The video version of it and where that's extracted from is my nightly Instagram show called Sensible Ignorance. Okay, and Sensible Ignorance is a mix of sense and fucking just ignorance. <laughs> so, it. so you know, it, it, it's a mix of sense and ignorance, and um and and you get a little bit of both. And and it was a it's a show that I'm doing what I want my way. I like and, that. And and it's a very vulgar, crazy, unpredictable, risque kind of show. And I have maybe about 200, 300 people to join me a night. Throughout the whole night, it might be like two thousand. But those are people who like that. And my my goal is to grow that audience until it's a thousand, two thousand, five thousand. And and again, when you make your own lane, it takes a long time to get there. But when you get there, it's your fucking lane. Right, right. Now, based on that, you've been around countless, I don't think you could count like hip hop artists, producers, thousands of shows. Has there been a story on your show from an artist that you were surprised about or didn't know of? Hmm. I heard a lot of them, man. I heard a lot of them. Um, just Lil C's probably saying that he wasn't even scared the night Biggie got killed. It was, you know, he was like, yo, man, I'm not thinking about shit. Um, just to hear him say that he wasn't even worried about the shit. Wow. I thought that that was the, the putting your head in the mouth of danger. But he maybe... They were so comfortable out there and they were so protected yeah. that it didn't even cross his mind. Wow. Um, that was the most surprising happen, yeah. thing I think I've heard. Wow. Wow, that is wow, surprising. All right. One. So, yeah, we're not going to keep you much longer, but we have this really great game we want to play. So every time we have a guest on the show, we're going to try to play a game with them. So this one, is this game's we've kind of created for Let's you. Get it. It's called This or That. All right. This or That. New York winter, Dubai summer. New York winter. All right, ice cream or pizza? I, I, I don't like hot weather. <laughs> I, my my summer house is somebody's. My my summer house is a winter wonderland. I ain't mad. I at that, don't man. listen. I don't like hot weather. I don't rock with hot weather. I don't. I can't stand hot weather. <laughs> I live for the summer. I mean, I live for the winter. Yeah. So right now, my life is just about getting from April. To September. That's it. Like that. Yeah, yeah, I feel you on that one. So is it ice cream or pizza? Pizza. Me too, man. All the way, man. Pizza's my favorite. Pizza's my favorite thing. Ugh, so I can good. walk into a, a pizza shop it's my and vice. look at the pizza and tell you if it's no good. <laughs> I know when a pizza's not made with love. I know when a pizza is just thrown up <laughs> yep. there. I go in a pizza shop all the time. I look at the pizza. I walk out. I don't care. I pizza. know when a pizza is made the right way with the right ingredients <laughs> yep. and the right amount of love. I, 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 I'm, uh, and I have pizza on every 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 plant every, every continent on this earth. Wow. I, I'm, I'm, I don't. I'm the same way. Like, but I'll I'll eat any pizza. I don't care. Pizza is like yeah, sex. I, I don't care. Listen, I'm eating trash just to yep. eat. Yeah, <laughs> I've eaten gas station pizza before. To me, pizza's like sex. It can be really bad, but it's still somewhat okay. Right, right. I'm with you on that. <laughs> Go ahead. Vinyl with turntables or CDJs? For the for the culture of vinyl. I respect um, that. But for carrying vinyl, CDJs. Oh, understanding, sorry. understanding life, CDJ. Oh, of course, there's. The, we're gonna have a discussion next week about the yeah. difference between turntables, CDJs, for sure. So, '90s hip hop or '2000s hip hop? '90s. Wow, I was gonna go with nineties. I like it. All right, would you rather have the crowd to lose control, a crowd to put their hands up? <laughs> In terms of the record, In terms of how you say it, Scoop. Oh, uh, definitely hands up, hands yeah. up, hundred percent. 
All right. Amazing. Thank you so much, Scoop. Scoop. Appreciate Anything else you, we homie. need to watch out for from Fat Man Scoop? I mean, uh, you know, just every day, uh, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific, my Instagram live show. It's called Sensible Ignorance. Come join us. It's a mix of sense. It's a mix of ignorance. Uh, the main thing about the show is you don't know what's going to happen next. Uh, it, there's really no script. It's like curb your enth- enthusiasm on Instagram. So Beautiful if thing. you can be a part of that, come join us. Love it. Um, Secondly, um, uh, just working on a bunch of records and doing certain things, you know, whether it's going to be rapping, singing, whatever. I just made up in my mind, life is too short. I'm going to do what the fuck I want to do. That's it. If I choose to sing, I fucking sing. If I choose to rap, I fucking rap. I do what I want to do. I mean, you know, like, all people can do is laugh at it or, or, or say it's no good, but the bottom line is that People who boo and people who criticize things, it's something about them. If you go to a, and there's nothing wrong with criticizing, have your fucking way about the song. It's your ears, it's your, it's Opinion, your eyes. Man, yeah. Fucking say what you want. But I noticed one thing the boos, the criticism, and all the bullshit always comes from one place. It comes from the seats. You never see motherfuckers on the field. That's, That's very really true. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. Booing each other. You don't go with nope. Jets versus Patriot game and see, you know, Darrell Reeves booing Tom Brady. You see that? Nope. You'll see, throw that shit over here. You throw that shit over here and watch what happens. Yeah, yeah, You'll yeah. see, you know, uh, Ocho Cinco versus, like like I said, Reeves. They won't be booing each other. It, Reeves will be like, you ain't getting nothing today. Or, I dare him to throw it. Or, you can't stop me. You yeah, never yeah. hear him born because they know how hard it is to do this. Yeah. The people who are, who are in the stands, who are watching, they're the only ones who boo. So, you know, that's that's the way I look at it. I, I, I look at fellow competitors and, and people who are in the ring. I don't, you know, if the fans boo or the fans don't like, whatever, man. Just I keep working. Oh, that's it. Love I love it. that. Yeah. Love it. So, first guest on I'm the Promoter, He's the DJ. Yeah, man. Fat Man Scoop. You want to give us an outro on the on the I'm the promoter, he's the DJ? Fat Man Scoop. Yo, everybody, come check out I'm the promoter, he's the DJ. You can get it everywhere that you get your favorite podcast. I'm the promoter, he's the DJ. Let's go. Thanks, Scoop. Thanks, Thanks for Scoop having so such much. an impact on my life and, yeah. and your friendship over all these years. And, and I appreciate everything you've done for me, brother. Thank you okay, so yeah, much. Bro, you, know I, you know I got you. It's going to take a minute. We'll, we'll get it done, but it's going to always get done, bro. Yeah, thank you so much, Scoop. Scoop. Oh, that was awesome, man. You know, shout out my guy, Fat Man Scoop. Like, seriously, that dude has done so much for me. And, and thank you again for taking your time out and sitting with us. Really and, appreciate it, Scoop. Yeah, man. So we have a question of the week this week. What is it, Jeff? All right. This is for DJs. Not as much promoters, so this is more DJ. This is for you, Jason. How important is knowing how to play on turntables, CDJs, verse controllers? And there's a second part of this question. If a new DJ is coming on the scene, do you think he needs to learn on turntables? That's a good question. I know we always have good questions, and and our guests always seem to think that we have good questions, but our, <laughs> our audience has great questions also. Yes. I believe, actually, you and I have spoke about this off air, about the difference between CDJs and turntables. I am a nostalgic person. Mm -hmm. I learned how to play with a pioneer or RCA radio shack turntable. That was a belt drive. Wow. So it had a, like a belt, like Like a car engine. Yeah. Yeah. Which has a delay. It it was just, it would go, (laughs) you know what I mean? Start up in a tape deck. So I, Back then, they didn't have CDJs. So if you wanted to DJ, you had no choice but to buy turntables and a mixer. Now, with that being said, when you got to the scene and it became me pulling up in front of a nightclub on 42nd Street in Times Square, where you could never find parking to begin with, but you have to carry seven crates of records up three flights of stairs by yourself... That shit sucked, bro. Yeah, yeah. I love vinyl. Don't miss carrying my crates. I had to fly around this country back and forth for years to the point where I'd have to buy, have the promoter buy another plane ticket so I could bring the extra luggage. Wow. So there'd be two seats. Right. One for me 
one empty seat just for the baggage to come of my records. I had to ship them to Hawaii. Like, it was. Oh. And, and the thing about that, I'll keep it short, is the amount of anxiety that comes when you're, like, yeah. standing there, like, waiting for your luggage to come out. When you know you're, it's not your shirts, right? If you don't have your fucking your records, work, yeah. you're not DJing, that <laughs> right, right? You know what I mean? So like, it's a big difference between waiting for your luggage and, and your shirt. So a new DJ, on. new DJ coming on. Do you think he has to learn turntables, or do you think he can go right to a controller, CDJs? Because there's always that huge debate, or with all these old heads that say, "Well, I bet you he can play on vinyl." Uh, I bet you could because I bet that that's relevant because playing on turntables, you can do it. Jeff, you played, you DJed. Mm-hmm. I could put my mom on turntables. She could figure it out. Right. Because she's using Serato. Now, if I gave her two 12 inch records yeah. that were not Serato and not, then that's a different art form mm-hmm. itself. Right, you don't right. have waveforms that you get to look at and line up or a sync button. Right. You know right. what I mean? You're really, you don't have cue points. Mm-hmm. You know, dropping a needle is an art form in itself. And I've done that for years. Like yeah. I don't always play a record at the first kick or the first, you know, on the one. I, sometimes I like to go to the course. You'd have to pick up the needle and actually drag it. Right, right, right. So with that being said, again, I'll keep it short. There's things that you could do on turntables that you can't do on CDJs. Mm-hmm. Right, and there's things on CDJs you can't do on turntables, so it's kind of fun. Like I wish I could rock a CDJ. Like some guys are dope. Like laid back Luke can rock a CDJ. Mm-hmm. Like I've seen him do loops, tricks, drag it in. My other guy DJ Politic, shout out to Politic. He knows how to use a CDJ. Mm-hmm. I don't. I'm still learning how to use a CDJ, but there is masterful tricks you can do on that right. that you can't do on turntable. Right, and right. then there's stuff you can do on turntable that you, you definitely can't do. I like to flip back records. Go, which is go back. You take the same record. You have one on channel one and one on channel two, and you just repeat, go back and forth, and juggle it a little bit. Right. Doing that on CDJs is a very difficult thing to do. Oh, I bet it. So the dip, but you don't need to start off on turntables. That's the answer to that question. So if a new DJ coming in the scene, would yeah. you have them get CDJs or a controller? I I think CDJs and a controller are the same thing. But there, but here's the thing about a CDJ versus controller. The difference is a CDJ you're gonna probably use one kind. It's a Pioneer CDJ, yeah, whatever it is. I don't even know because I don't own them. Sorry guys, I have turntables. But the controllers, you could have like a cheaply made controller right. that could be very difficult to learn how to DJ as opposed to a higher end one where it's a little bit easier. Got it. Like the difference between a Radio Shack turntable and a yeah. Technique turntable, yeah, almost right. the same thing. You don't need to know, learn how to DJ on turntables right now. It, that is a nostalgic thing. Mm-hmm. If you want to do it, I think it's a beautiful thing. The CDJs are standard in every club because you don't have to worry about... There's a lot that comes with turntables. The right. feedback, the RCA cables, the connection to the needle. Yeah. Even though people are using phase and stuff, there's just so many things that could go wrong with, right, within right. that element of yeah. using a turntable. Got with it. a CDJ, you just have an RCA hook in. Right, right. You know what I mean? So, no, you don't need to learn how to do it on turntables, but you need to learn how to read a room because, again, I can't emphasize, again, how important mm-hmm. that is art aspect right. of is is because you can't be taught that shit i don't give a fuck well i appreciate it that was a great question of the week. <laughs> that yeah. was awesome that was a great question of the week and keep sending any questions in um you know we love answering them we have a few questions that we'll we'll get to in the next couple of weeks some great ones that people have uh yeah have they're sent stacking in. up yeah. for sure man so I with that it. being said you know what time it is it's jeff time uncle jeff let's go man all right Somebody said it sounds Gather like a fart around, noise. kids. It's story time with Uncle Jeff. The names have been left out to protect the guilty. Now, here's a little story I got to tell you. <laughs> All right. All right, it's that time of the show. The Everybody time. knows if you're tuning in, you know Uncle Jeff always has an amazing story to tell from being in this nightlife business for a long time, and we're always excited to hear it. So let's go, Jeff, with All the right. story of the week. This is a story. The time the hotel heiress drank all the tequila. 
Okay. Okay. All right. I think I know who it is. Yeah. There could be two choices in my head. So let's see if I can guess at the end. I'm not telling you, though. But you'll never tell me. Yeah. So this person was in her heyday, might have had a reality show. She was she was the it person Okay. in this time period. My phone's ringing again. Maybe it's her. This guy is on fire today, kids. <laughs> he is so popular today. <laughs> it's... We're getting back to life, and Jeff is yeah. just becoming really important. So she comes in. Club's packed. Okay. She comes in. She was. Uh, she had some friends from Harvard that she was visiting. Harvard Yard. And uh, they came as well. So she came with a huge, huge group. So she get bring her to her table. People taking pictures. She orders a bottle of tequila. Now, did, did uh, again, I always... I think you should emphasize this. Did they actually hit you up before they came, or just did, did they just show up? It was known that she was coming. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Is that now? Is that the majority of the time they give you a heads up? Before yeah. They come? Yeah. Usually, yeah. You get a pretty good. Not necessarily the person, their friend, their entourage. You know, somebody whatever. within the within within that. the circle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. She orders a bottle of tequila. Mm -hmm. The other guys at her table order a bottle of vodka. So I go over there, make sure, check in, she's doing all right. She takes the bottle of tequila. Yeah. And just chugs it. No way. <laughs> and dude. just chugs it. Like a, like a fucking champ, huh? Like ch it was unbelievable. I've never seen something like, oh, man. You've seen a lot of stuff, and you were, you were pretty impressed <laughs> yeah. by that? And it, was wow. and it was Patron. It was disgusting. Um, Heartburn. So I was like, oh, this is going to This is going to end. <laughs> this is going to be awful. bad. Because yeah. you know they were partying before they got there, right? Oh, 100%. Yeah. Oh, God. So, keeps chugging, chugging. I keep going over, seeing the bottle getting lower and lower. She must have taken down almost three quarters of the bottle, and I'm like to the face herself, herself. It was, it was amazing. I said, you know, can you get on? You know, people are just taking pictures. And everything. I'm like, is there any chance you can go to the DJ booth, get on the mic? She had a new song out at the time as well. So she gets on. She goes to the DJ booth. I know she was. She loosened up, so I was like, yeah, 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 yeah obviously, yeah. I think she's like a half bottle of uh, tequila, she's yeah. a little loose. Gets on the mic, shouts out DJ, DJ Hectic was DJing that night, play her song, she had a, uh, I think Scott Storch might have produced it, I, I'm not, not positive on that, but it, mm. it was a song, maybe not. <laughs> no, I think you're right. Um, I don't know who it is, so I so, don't know. Anything. So then, goes back to the table, continues drinking tequila. So at this point, it's like... My kind of girl, man. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> so then they're like, she needs to go downstairs. So <laughs> Powder of the nose? <laughs> I don't think it was powder in the nose. She goes there. She, they're like, can we have a like a private little section for her? So I bring her down the basement, basically where the, the bar backs go and everything yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the back room where yeah. the liquor storage she, is. They're like, she just wants to smoke. So we go down there, bring her there. And she didn't smoke a cigarette. She's sm <laughs> smoking weed. The owner... Always the owners. Always. In my story, it's always the owners. Owner came down. Who's smoking weed down here? And then he turns around and sees the hotel there. And he's like, oh, <laughs> carry on. <laughs> well, you look at Jeff, you would think he'd be the suspect, to be honest with you guys. <laughs> After she smokes. Yeah. So now she's, she's loose. Really loose. <laughs> she's really loose, yeah. Goes back. Guess what she does? Finishes the bottle of tequila. Finishes the bottle of tequila. Oof. And that's the time the hotel heiress drank all the tequila. That's crazy. Now, how did you get her out of there? Did she take it like a champ and just like, all right, thanks, guys. I had a good night. Walked out like nothing. 100%. Dang. That's unbelievable. She looked, she probably, it sounds like she walked out of there better than all the athletes so far you've told stories about. <laughs> Very true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome yeah. story, Jeff. Awesome. Great job, bro. Thank you. Gather around, kids. It's story time with Uncle Jeff. The names have been left out to protect the guilty. Now, here's a little story I got to tell. You. <laughs> Not a good idea who that one was. But that's a great story, man. Like, you. For real. I don't know. How, yeah, it was good, dude. Yeah. For real. Well, with that being said, you know, we got to keep it moving along because we have another guest. You know what I mean? So... Wait, can you edit that shit? What was? I, are we saying? 
Oh, so next week will be the thing. Mm. Oh, okay. That was my fault. Okay. All right. I give it five seconds and it's starting again. All right. Jeff, that was awesome, dude. Like, yo, I think I know who you're talking about, but <laughs> I won't I'm not even tell guess because you'll never tell me I'm anyways. Tell. So with that being said, we're going to keep it moving. You know what time it is. It's time for PNN Breaking News. PNN, the Positive News Network. Network, network, network. You know, there's enough crappy news out there, sadness and all that bull. So we come here, we do a little things different here on this end of things. We do the Positive News Network, and Jeff always comes up with an amazing Positive News Network story. And what is the story this week, Jeff? This story this week... Um, which both of us watched. I'm very excited about this week's PNN story. Was which we've talked about before. Triller in verses. It was the verses of Isley Brothers and Earth, Wind, and Fire. Woo! It went on for hours, and it hours in- influenced so many generations of music that. We have a quote from Static Selector. Shout out Static. Shout out my guy, Static Selector. He said, no matter who sampled all this, the originals were the best. You can't say yes. that about every song that's been sampled. Very true. Isley Brothers, just going a few. Biggie, Mac Miller, Jay Dilla, Ice Cube, Tupac, Bone Thugs, Beastie Boys, Jay-Z, Snoop, Eminem, Nas, James Brown, Michael Jackson, just to name a few, have all sampled from the Isley Brothers. Earth, Wind, and Fire, just for a few. Tribe Called Quest, MF Doom, Big Pun, TLC, Rick Ross, Kanye, Bob Sinclair, DJ Shadow, Jungle Brothers, to name a few. And I bet you some of those artists sampled both Isley <laughs> Brothers and Earth, Wind & Fire. Very true. I yeah, mean, there was a lot of crossover. Uh, it, was, it was amazing. So uh, the news of is so amazing because it did influence so many generations of music that you can hear. It's timeless. And it, you can't say that a lot timeless. about it. Yeah, it's definitely timeless. And it was like, I was texting Jeff while this was going on. And I said, Jeff, I haven't stopped smiling. I mean, when you said this went on for hours, it was about a four-hour thing. Yeah, it was awesome. I had a smile on my face for about four hours. I don't know if it was from the, I, I don't usually drink at home, but I yeah. decided, you know, Steve Harvey's smoking a cigar. Yeah. It's like one of those moments. Like, Did you drink all the tequila? No, I only had one <laughs> tequila drink, but I smoked the joint and I watched it and I was yeah. sat back and I so like I just had a moment, man. Yeah. And I know a lot of Earth, Wind and Fire songs and I know a lot of Isley Brothers songs. But there's also songs that I didn't know and I was like, Oh my God, they sang that song. They mm-hmm. did a couple covers that they that weren't originally their songs, but it was you know, a record they put out and it was just like one after another, and Mr. Biggs showed up for a minute. Yeah. And then the internet went a little weird with that because <laughs> R. Kelly wrote the words, yeah. you know, the lyrics. But it was just a wonderful, everybody, the energy. Shout out my guy, D Nice, too, for holding oh, it yeah. down. D Nice is on there. Yo, yeah. D Nice played like a set in between. I was just so fire, yeah. man. He played Queen Pen Party in a party because Earth, Wind, and Fire. The, the uh, I can't even remember off the top of my head. I'm not good at song uh, titles at all, so let's not pretend that I am. <laughs> but it was just, like, seamless. Steve Harvey was amazing. Mm-hmm. There was a point in time he was crying on stage. Yeah. He's like, I danced to this song to my, like, daughter's wedding. Like, right. For, that's how it was for me. How was it for you? Like it was just so it was it was really positive, and I thought this would be a great time to talk about during positive news. Yeah, because it, it was so positive, and I think it's it, when I say it's timeless. I think that you can't say that a lot about a lot of. There's no artist right now that have come out that I don't that I think would even compare. Um, to these two groups um, in terms of the influence on generations of music. Oh, never. Yeah. Well, the, this comes back to something we always discuss about, though, too. There's no longevity in this business anymore. Mm-hmm. You put a single out, and if single's hot, your single's hot, you don't have two singles. There's on. artists that only are hot for two weeks. <laughs> that's crazy. And that's a fact. Yeah. We spoke about this was it, two weeks ago about the Migos. The Migos are going to have longevity because they created a sound. Everybody that copied them is going to be gone tomorrow. Yeah. Because they weren't innovative. They were following a trend. You right. can't f- stay in your own lane. Create your own lane. Right. You want longevity? 
don't make a song that you hear like a don't be influenced by a song you hear on the radio right now because by the time you get in the studio you finish that record up it's old it news. actually gets to the that sound is gone it's old news and it's not positive it news. it's not positive Woo! news <laughs> jeff's on fire i'm today. on fire today let's go <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> I do that stuff on purpose, guys. Seriously. Oh, another great episode. Um, yeah, you guys. Thanks for all the the follows, likes, shares. Um, and if you don't know, you can follow at I'm the promoter. He's the DJ. You can follow Jason Smith at. <laughs> And Jason Smith music nice. on Instagram. He got it right this time. And I did get it right this time. And Jeff has a new Instagram At and it is Jeff London underscore. And our Instagram is I am the promoter. He's the DJ. Hit us up. Answer the question. I mean, send us questions yep. or send us anything you want to send. Uh, we appreciate the feedback. Just no dick pics. <laughs> and uh, yeah. We're back next week. We're going to have a special guest in next week. I think we're going to start doing that every week. So definitely stay here and stay tuned and stay in touch and stay positive. Yes. Word to your mother. <laughs>